time I probably won't go back to it for the rest of the day. They said I got for two hours, is that right? <coughs> no? No? We do have our Baptist in here. Wave in the back. You see me? You see me okay? Okay. All right, I'm Paul Graham, director of IT. <clears throat> and I walk around so I think I could talk loud enough. Can everybody hear me now? This right here is just for that, so he gets a good feed for that. But anyway, I'm director of IT. My office is on the Vidalia campus. And I'm the one you probably say bad words about when things don't work right with your computer here on campus. We do our best, but technology does fail us, and it fails us at the most inconvenient time it could fail us, right? middle of a test, those type of things. Does it fail us when we're just Facebooking, right? Just when we're doing a test. Well, anyway, how many in here use Microsoft Office? How many has ever bought Microsoft Office? How many ever wanted to buy Microsoft Office <clears throat> and went and got the price of it? What's it going now? A couple hundred bucks for Microsoft Office. How many has ever used Adobe products like Photoshop, Dreamweaver? Have you ever bought that? That's even a bigger, bigger price than that. Well, what today's topic is about is remote lab access, um, Citrix, and what's the other acronym we use for that? IDS. RLA, Remote Lab Access, um, IDS, Information Delivery System, and Citrix. Um, we started off with Remote Lab Access called RLA, and then we went a few, a few years on that, and we went to IDS, Information Delivery System, and then I just changed it to Citrix. And the reason being is because every time we changed, or we had to upgrade, the company themselves seemed to have wanted to change the name of the technology. And so and instead of having to continue updating that name the third time, I said, I'm just going to do Citrix. That's the name of the company. And unless they sell, then we'll always be good on that. So at least for a few upgrades, we'll be good on that. You may ask, what is Remote Lab Access Information Delivery System Citrix? It's a technology that, that allows me to push applications to your desktop to use to do schoolwork. Or for, I mean, you could use it for job application if you wanted to. So applications that you use here on campus, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Um, some of the Adobe products will work. <clears throat> we, we are able to push those to your desktop at your house for free for you to use those. This system in its initial uh, installation was designed to be an auxiliary service for students. What that means is we can't make it a completely 100% required tool for you to use in your classrooms because we can't afford to have 24-7 support for this system. Because it's always going to go down Friday afternoon, or for us Thursday afternoon, and usually by Sunday so, someone may, may have emailed me that it's down. I don't use the system much. I'll tell you, I see computers all day, every day. I very seldom get on a computer once I leave Southeastern Tech. I've done it for ever since I was in college. I spent all, all this time on them. So, I rarely look at a computer when I leave the school. I get email on my phone, but typically I'm not notified when the system immediately goes down. And so it's an auxiliary service that we offer to you for free, but as a person I would also recommend that you have a backup plan. So if you log in on Friday afternoon and the system goes down, or if it was down and you have work you have to do, have a friend or a cousin, public library or somewhere where you can jet up there to get an assignment turn in. That's between you and your faculty man, or your instructor. That's not, all I can do is tell them whether it was up or down when they call me and say, what's the system now this weekend? So that allows us to push stuff to you for free. It's an auxiliary or, or, or just an extra service we provide to you. Um, it's not something that I would promote as a required service for you to use because we just can't support it 24-7. Our faculty that use it for classes are getting more proficient with being able to test things out when you call them and say it's down, well, they'll know if it's more of your system than it is the other system. We're going to get there right in, um, in just a moment, but I want to kind of give you an overview of it. And I want to show everybody my speech. Y'all like them speeches? I like them too. But we want to fill it up a little bit. So if anybody in here right now has had an opportunity to try to use remote lab access successfully or unsuccessfully, and you have some questions for me, raise your hand. I'm going to write some things down, and then I'm going to address them as we go. If you're bashful and you don't want to raise your hand, then I'll flip to my speech that was made 
last time I did this and I'll just go from that. But right now, anybody got any questions, concerns about this technology before we go any further? None? All right, we'll go to the, to the first one we had here. First, let me start off with how to get there. We have a tool called MySTC. Who's familiar with that? Everybody's familiar with it? Great tool. Awesome tool. It gives you one place to log in to access everything that you would need for Southeastern Tech. The bad part about that is if MySTC goes down, sometimes we forget our way. If we get used to going in one direction and all of a sudden that place is down, then we panic and we can't do anything. But Citrix does not rely on MySTC, nor does MySTC rely on Citrix. It's a standalone system it can run. So I'm going to show you how to get there directly to Citrix. So if you're ever on the weekend, you go to MySTC, and it says, oh, we can't see this site today, or this site's unavailable, then you don't get the green light as no schoolwork for the weekend, because there are ways to get there. And I have made faculty aware that there are other ways to get to our system besides just through this because they call me when my STC's down and that's not a system we own or service. It's an outside entity provides that service for us. So when it's down, I have no control over it. I can't even come up here, unlock the doors, run in there and push the power button to turn it on when it's shut down for some reason. So <clears throat> I can't take the heat for my STC if it's not working. Now, it works pretty much all the time. But there has been some issues when it wouldn't work just right. How many knows what this side is? That's our website, right? How do you get there? www.southeastertech.edu, right? If I wanted to go to my STC, probably most of you would go here first, right? And then you click my STC, right? But if you wanted to go there without going here, do you know what to type? My, my.southeastertech.edu, and go there. Back in the day, we used to have names this long for back end services, and you would rely on links to get to those. I've tried to really make those names short and meaningful for the system. For instance, MySTC would go my.southeastertech.edu. Almail, if you want to check your student email, what would you type if you didn't want to go straight here? Anybody know? Just Al. Just Al. That's very good because you're, you're going to get the next one. I bet you do. So if we wanted to go to Almail, we would just type al.southeastertech.edu. All right. What about Citrix? Not my, just Citrix. <laughs> Got partial credit. You got an A right now. You got an A still. Um, we just type in citrix.southeasterntech.edu to get there. So I'm going to go directly to Citrix. Just do Citrix. Just do Citrix. And I'm a hunting pecker. That's the way I type. Two fingers like this right here. I've never learned how to type. I've been a computer programmer for several years. I was on the nerd squad at Valdosta State. We went and competed and wrote little programs, and I still don't know how to type. So this is me. You type pretty good, though. I bet don't you? are a computer guy. Do you, do you type like me? You, you the, you're good. I, I never learned how to type. So I'm a hunting pecker. So um, we got here. This is our login screen. For you guys, anything you want to access for STC, that we own, that we service, what is your username? 9100 number, everybody got an A. What's your password? Your PIN, don't say it out loud. <clears throat> okay, it's your 9100 number and PIN. Where does that 9100 number and PIN, where did it all originate from? What, what, what is that? That's your student ID number, right? That's your banner web username and password. So everything we do and we provide services to you that you have to log into relies on your banner web username and password. What happens if your PIN gets locked or reset? In about two hours, anything you have access to for Southeastern Tech is locked or your PIN is reset. So anything, if you ever try to get into MySTC, Citrix, Almail, and it says username and password are incorrect, go try to get in banner web. And if I'm a betting man, I probably was going to put money on the side that you can't get in Banner Web either. And so you have to make sure your Banner Web username and password works. If it works in Banner Web and it still doesn't work in those systems, there's probably something has happened. Um, and some of you guys could let me know. Um, there's, th there's fires in Banner that can make your PIN reset. 
I think if you change a major, does it still reset their pen when they change majors? It used to, it may not anymore. If you got a sneaky boyfriend or a girlfriend or a significant other or a mother or dad that knows your, they saw your badge and they know your student ID number, they say, I'm gonna see what kind of grades they getting. And they go try 9100 number, and they say, I'm gonna try their birthday. Ah, incorrect, oh, let me try birthday this way. And if they do it three times, that's two and a half for most of you, but for me it's three, I'll hold it up that way, it's a broke finger. Um, if they do it three times incorrectly, guess what? Your pen is locked out. Guess what happens in two, within two hours? Everything else is locked out. And that's because our system syncs with Banner Web, so your Banner Web username and password is what everything relies on. And so if something happens and that gets locked out, then you'll need to go see the registrar to get that set because even if I went into the system that controls this and I set your pin, guess what happens in another two hours? It goes back to Banner Web. So if we don't get Banner Web fixed, this stuff is just gonna be a continuous loop of, of unfixing itself. <clears throat> so be sure that you are aware that Banner Web is the central source of your username and password. That's where it's all maintained at. From there, we update these systems periodically throughout the day to, um, so that you can access them with the same username and password. We did that, so who, who in here used Angel? Different username and password, ain't it? Well, it somewhat. You got 43 underscore in front of the username, right? If you don't go through my STC. But if you went through my STC, um, <clears throat> the first time it probably asked you for your password, we automatically pre-pin 43 underscore in my STC, then, ask, then it stores it, and then that, oh, hey, get in. But if you go directly to Angel, you got 43 underscore your ID, and then some password that I have no clue what it is. Some of you may have called me and said, hey, I can't get into Angel. I said, oh, I, congratulations, I can't either. I don't have access to Angel, only your instructor. And for here, it's, um, who's the online facilitator? Uh, Sonia, Wil Sonia Wilson over here. And if you happen to be in Vidalia, you can see Ashley Harmon. <clears throat> and no one can set that. But anyway, just imagine for a moment, you got that one password for Angel. If we did something different for Almail, we did something different for MySTC, and we did something different for computers, and we did, get kind of confusing, wouldn't it? And then if MySTC wasn't working, then you'd be like, dang, I can't remember how to get in any of this. So we elected to do that. But let me go ahead and log in, and I'm going to use my credentials. Some of the things that when I open this up, you're going to see that you don't have access to and that's just because I'm the IT guy and usually with my password you can see everything. So I'm going to ask all of you to close your eyes real quick while I put my password in. Got your eyes closed? Don't write it down now. <laughs> dot, 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 dot. <clears throat> and if I typed it in correctly, I'm into the system correctly. Am I good? Nobody got my password, right? Good. I might have to change it when I get back to the office. If I get locked out, I know somebody tried dot, 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 dot. <laughs> so we got a folder of applications here, and you may be one of those students that come in that says, hey, what is all this stuff? I'm a very nosy guy. If I log into this, I'm going to have to look. I'm going to have to look at all the folders. And so I may come over here. Let me find my mouse. Where are we at? Hey, you got turned on. Yeah, it's turned on. Do I need to turn it off and back on? Oh. I see him, but he ain't want to move. No. All right, Hutch, what's up with your mouth? I don't work on computers. <laughs> reset it. Now you're going to have to make me look. Ah, oh, whoo! That's the guy with the magic. Give me my hand, folks. <clears throat> so if I come in here, I'm the nosy guy, I, mean, I might click on that. And then all of a sudden the instructor comes back, what you doing? Looking on my screen and I'm, I'm in class, oh my lord. I'm, so I exit out real quick. Well guess what happens the next time I log into Citrix? This is where it puts me. And if I'm a new user, guess what happens? What do I do? Word's not there. Call the IT department. I log in and I have no word. Oh, look up here in this upper corner. I'll make sure it works. Yeah, it's working. Come right here, you got the letter main underscore. If you click that, it's going to take you back to the main screen. So it's just like a chiseled down. I could have more folders here, 
And I could take you into 40 levels deep. We try to keep it as simple as possible, so we only go one level deep with any of our screens. So if I come in and I don't have what I want to see, just click main and it takes you back to your screen. Now let me see what my speech says. See if I need to cover in this yet. Okay, we're still good. So here we have the applications that probably 99.9% .9 of you guys are going to be interested in Microsoft Office because that's probably what most of you guys are going to use for your class and it's what most of you guys don't want to pull out the pocket and go pay $200 and I wouldn't either if I, had, if I had a choice to do it for free. And so when you come here to Microsoft Office, uh oh, he don't like me. Uh oh, Hutch. What kind of contraption y'all running here? It's got all kind of green lights on it. It don't like me. I break stuff. Ah, magic. Uh, I'm going to go into PowerPoint instead of Word because this brings me to one of my, my um, points here from the last time I did this. And I'm just going to show you something. Or we could do Word. It doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and do Word. If you do this, some browsers are so secure, they don't trust that you're an avid user and that you know what you want to do. So they do little things like this. And if you don't respond, it's going to start turning colors on you. So it gets red and mad. So I'm going to respond if the mouse will work for five more minutes. And I'm going to click open. You have to click open. If you don't click open, nothing happens. And then we wait and twiddle our thumbs. The first time you're looking for this, not that, the one behind there that just disappeared. That's now starting something different. The first time you use this, it may take a moment for that to pop up. That's normal. If you're like some users, if it don't happen right there, then we exit out of everything and we cuss the IT guy. <laughs> so anyway, see where it started. This is a security screen that pops up. It says a remote application has requested access to information on a device attached to your computer. Everybody sees that and goes, oh God, they go look at all my stuff. And they click no. Need to click yes. If you don't click yes, we can't save files to or from the server. I can only, I can't look at, and I click this don't ask me again, so it would never bother me again. But I'm going to click yes here. And if you see, it looks just like Word in one of your lab computers, does it not? It looks just like Word. And so I've got Word up, and I can start an application. I, mean, I can start a document. But if you don't click that yes, and again, I can't see anything on your personal computer. This just says, I'm going to give you access to click on things. And while you're clicking on things, I'm going to let you read and write from things. So if you don't, I can't go in when you're logged in and start looking at your home computer. It just don't work that way. Can't do it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click open blank doc or create a blank document. And now we've got Word started and we got, we start typing things. Now, imagine this, if you will, that you're looking in a, in a box about this big. Maybe bigger if we're looking at that one. But everything you're doing has to be contained in that box. So if I go down here to my Windows Explorer, That's no longer in my box that I'm looking at. That's outside of that box. So you, when you're in Citrix, everything you do has to be inside the Citrix window. So we can't drag, say, from here over to Word or something like that. We have to do everything inside. And I'm going to show you how to navigate this in just a moment. Can't copy paste from here to Citrix. You can do it inside Citrix. You just can't do it. And I'm going to show you in just a minute what I'm talking about there. Um, Lord have mercy, I done lost my train of thought, so we're just going to continue on here. Um, but anyway, you're working through Citrix, and say I want to open a document. Say my instructor says, go to the M drive. M drive special. What's M stand for? Materials. Course materials. She sends you home to open up a course materials document that she wants you to modify for a grade, and you're going to do wonderful work on it, get 100 when you submit it, and then you get it back, and it's... 99 and you're mad. But anyway, she says go click and open up some stuff. And so when I click computer, I want to click browse. <clears throat> and here, this is still, if you notice, I have not clicked on anything that has not 
popped up from my initial click from Citrix. Everything's been inside this bubble. So I open up my, and this looks just like if you're on your computer at home, right? See if I can, I can't maximize that. Maybe not. All right, so I'm going to drag him big time. All right, so if you're on your computer at home and you create a document and you click save, oh, that's screen number two. I'm glad it popped up. Here you want to say, don't ask me again, and yes, don't click the other one. Now this is the one where the computer says, are you sure you want to let me access stuff on my computer, on your computer? And you have to say yes twice. So if you come here, if you're in a computer lab or you're at your home computer and you're fortunate enough you got Microsoft Office, you type in your document and you click save, you probably save the documents, right? Don't do that in Citrix. Guess where that document's folder is at? It's on my server. And when the server gets cranky because he don't have any more disk space left, guess what he does? He don't shut down, he deletes everything in that folder right there. <laughs> so if you saved your work there, it may be there for a day, it may be there for six months. It's just cool when the server gets cranky and wants to clean up itself. So don't save it there. If we look down here, we want to look when we're in Citrix, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to get in the habit of this on any computer. So you'll always know exactly where you're saving your work. I mean, so many times I've had people, even in computer labs, I did this and I've been working on it for 30 minutes and I saved it. Now it's not there. Where'd you save it at? I don't know. Okay. Well, let's go hunt the Easter egg. It's the one colored in pink with the little blue straps on it. <clears throat> so anyway, look at computer. And you'll see you have all these drives listed here. My light bulb just went off. What I was going to mention while I go. If you have a flash drive, who uses flash drives out here? and you want access to that flash drive, it has to be plugged into your computer before you start any Citrix application. Because what happened when I started uh, Microsoft Word, all that things we had to answer yes to, it investigated your machine. It says, do you have a C drive? If you do, see down here it says C on SW1222, all that stuff. That's the local C drive on that computer. It saw that I had a CD-ROM drive in that computer and it mapped that there. It's going to look, see if I have printers. If I have printers, it's going to map them so I can print to them from Citrix. It does that when you start the application. I know that when you plug the flash drive in your computer, your computer pops up right then and says it's there. Citrix doesn't do that. Because Citrix never looks again at your system after it initially makes its launch here. So if you get this far, and you pull your flash drive out, and you pop it in your machine, guess what you got to do? You got to exit all the way out. <laughs> and come back, but leave the thumb drive in there this time. About the fourth time that happens, you'll remember put it in the first time. <clears throat> all right, so now we're going to go to the M drive. And you look here, and it's mighty hot in here. Is anybody else hot? Or am I just moving too much? I think I got insulation, too, that's keeping me warm, too. All right, so um, <clears throat> we go to the M drive, and we got a bunch of stuff there. And we're just going to go, I'm just going to go to a random folder. Let's see, what class do I want to play with and mess their files up? Anybody take it a class y'all want me to mess their files up real quick? Uh, we'll just go to Alma. All right. <laughs> that one wasn't a good one. Let me see if I can find one that's... All right. I'm going to do something real quick here because this brings me to the PowerPoint issue that I had last time, but it's an issue that could happen with any application. So your instructor has been very kind, has given you two more days to do this assignment because the IT department didn't know what they were doing and everything was broken. But now we got it fixed and we're all good and you were right and you told us everything we need to fix and I do have one of those students too, by the way. Um, so we, now we're ready to go. We're set down, we've got our instructions, we know where to go. We go to the M drive and she says, open up some comp 1000 folder and you'll see a file there, open it up, modify it, and you go there and this is what you see. It's empty. There's nothing there but some other folders and not the file that she wanted me to have. <coughs> I said I wasn't go, but I will. Special Mountain Dew, it's got some additives in it. <coughs> so we come here, and if you look, I changed a little thing down here. But I did that for a purpose. Because a lot of the, the new Word and PowerPoint and stuff like that, they save now. and stuff. The Word used to save DOC was the file extension. I'm not going to get you all in detail about file extension. Just know that we have to know how to identify a file and we do it by file extension. You don't see those, and you probably never worried about that unless you're in a CIS program. 
The old word in PowerPoint saved without an X at the end of the extension. And so if you notice it says Word 97 2003 documents in that little file type box, the blue box over there. And if my mouse works, I'm going to change that. <clears throat> And what you want to learn how to use is the one at the very top that says all files. So if you've ever been given instructions to go to a folder and you know where that folder's at and you were told there's a file there, but you go there and it's not there, always change this to all files. Magic's fixing to happen, so get ready. Don't fly out your seats when I click this. <laughs> oh Lord, you about fell out. What? <laughs> Thought it was fit to jump out. So now what just happened? Magic happened and three files appeared there. That's because the way the computer recognizes the files, if we don't have the right thing chosen in that box, then it won't show here. But if we choose all files over here, it'll show everything there. And so if, if, if I was instructed to, man, these are teaching how to type, and I can't do that. But anyway, just, just say I was, I was um, supposed to open up this biometric typing. <clears throat> and it wanted me to do some things to it. Okay. Whew. Let's add some blank document. So, uh oh, we done got some errors, don't we? Need to get on that instructor. But anyway, I'm not supposed to open up this document and I'm supposed to make some changes and save it. Where they, where they want you to save your work to? P drive. P drive. Let me give you just a little bit of. Let me sell the P drive to you, because some of you don't like the P drive. You want to use your flash drive. Your flash drive is your sole possession, got all of your documents on it. What happens if you lose that? It's gone. I am a victim of that. And I think it was at Wendy's when this happened to me. Because I came out of Wendy's, and I went to get my keys out of my pocket. You know, those things ain't big. And the one I had was like tiny. It was my special one. It was little. Put it in there, you wouldn't even see it in the computer. I hide it from you. I was coming out and I pulled my keys out, I guess. Got in my truck and went on about my business. About, a day, about that afternoon when I was cleaning my pockets out by the bed, putting my keys and my chain. Guess what wasn't in my pocket? My little flash drive. Guess what I had on that flash drive? I had probably, gosh, 10 or 12 years worth of computer graphics that I had created. But guess what I did? I had a backup. So I was saved, but if you don't have a backup, you're not saved. You lose that flash drive, you lost everything. So in other words, we need two flash drives to save everything, just get to lose one? You need three. Because <clears throat> you could lose two. And, I, and you laugh about that. When I was in college, we used things called floppy disks. Who knows what a floppy disk is? <laughs> it's a hard disk that's about that big. It's not that floppy. It's not floppy. Now the ones that, we, that I started out with was about that big. And it was kind of flexible. <laughs> It was for somewhat floppy. But anyway, when I was doing my computer programs, you know, and I would work all night on those things and I'd save them, I would have three copies of my work. I'd have the one I took to class, I'd have one in my book bag, and my computer disc back there, because I'm cool, you know, I walk around college with my computer disc, big floppy disc. I put it with a big plastic box that you put them into. And then I have one that I would leave at home. But those are the old days. They didn't have the P drive back then. We got the P drive. Why is it called a P drive? We got an A plus all across this aisle right here. Good job. It's called a P drive. That's, why we said it for that's right. That's right. Learning everything. You're going to walk out of here and they're going to say, hey, go talk to them. They know that stuff. Um, cool kids on campus. Um, so we got the P drive. You save your work to the P drive. It's backed up four times a week, every night. Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. If you work on a Friday and you damage it, you just lost the work because I ain't bagging it up again until Monday. The reason, we just don't have people to swap the disc out. We swap it out every day, put a new disc in it. It takes from 10 o'clock at night to 6 o'clock the next morning to back up that stuff. So it's not a quick thing. It's not like we could just run up there and throw one in there and back it up and be done. So we back it up those four nights. So your work's backed up. So you really can't lose it unless we have a really bad catastrophe happen. I'm talking like a tornado come through, blow the roof off, wet everything, a fire breaks out and burns up everything. But at that point in time, I can promise you, this IT director probably is still in a hole somewhere with his head covered up if we get a catastrophe like that. 
And so if you come knock on my door about your P drive files, I'm gonna probably not have good things to say at that point. But anyway, barring that, you probably won't lose P drive files. You say, well that's great, I'll just get my two flash drives. And I'll just keep them on that. And that's good if you want to keep that organized. But then you got to keep, you know, you got to keep them updated. Oh, was this one one? Not this one. But anyway, another secret I'm going to tell you guys, because y'all were nice enough to come, let me talk to you and bore you for how long we've been going. Oh, wow, I got to hurry up. Um, to let me bore you guys, I'm going to give y'all a secret. Now, y'all don't write this down, because if you, you can't take any of this knowledge out of here, you got to leave it in here. If you were, say, for Thursday, open up your document for your class, and something was going on that had you distracted. Maybe somebody's winking at you across the classroom or something, I don't know. And you open up the wrong document, you started working on it. Made 30 minutes worth of changes to it. You saved it. And when, when you realize you locked your keys in your car? When that little door leaves your hand. When it leaves your hand, you realize right then you locked your keys up. 90% of the time. When it leaves your hand, and then you look like a ninja trying to karate chop and get back and catch it and we, we're, we're never fast enough, we're never fast enough. That's when you're going to realize you just made a mistake when you hit save and it says successfully saved. The computer is excited. It just did something for you and you just <clears throat> want to throw it down because you just made a mistake. If you come to me with the little eyes and you tell me what you did, guess what I could do? I could put in Wednesday's tape and I can restore your document back to Wednesday's form when you mess it up on Thursday. I can do that. And I will. I've done it in the past where students have done something they didn't mean to. Or, or if you, I don't know, I, I'm just going to delete these files just to aggravate my instructor because they're going to come graded or something. And you delete the files and you realize that's not in the best favor, in the best interest for your grade, then you can come to me and I can restore it from the latest backup that I've got. So that's something you don't have with that, with that flash drive. You just take that flash drive, stick it in there, open a the document up, and do whatever, and goof it up. And then guess what? You just rebuild it. I can do that. Y'all don't tell nobody when you leave here, because I can't have everybody come and ask me that kind of stuff. Just for you guys, because you're special. You came to my thing. So we can just call again and be all nice and sweet. Just call and be all nice and sweet. Probably if you ain't nice and sweet, if it has to do with your work and stuff, I'm probably going to do it anyway. But it, it is nice to have somebody. We never get called on, the, on Monday morning at 8 o'clock. Hey, IT, y'all are doing a great job. Thank you for giving us internet. We never get that call. We get that call on Monday morning. What's on that internet? I can't get on right now. <laughs> we get that call. We don't get that other call. So if you do call and you want to preface that with, hey, guys, y'all doing such a great job. I've lost a file. Would you mind getting it back for me? You get a little mark by you get a mark by your name, and I will do it right then. I won't even hesitate. I'll put my Facebook down to go take care of that. So when you're up here, and I want to save this document, if you click save and you just open it up off the M drive, it's going to say you ain't allowed to do that. That's going to be that next frustration level. Your little monitor is going to go off, and it's going to go up a little higher because you say, I got to save it. You've got to save it to your P drive. If you just hit save. It's trying to save it right back where you open it from and it's not going to let you. You can't save to our M drive. We do that so that some students who love to be jokesters, like I was in the day, may go, let me go change this so the next class can't use it because I'm mad at the instructor. None of y'all would do that, I know. So anyway, we want to do save as, and again, click computer, click the browse button, and as long as the mouse will continue working, my, it's hot in here. I guess it's the liquor I'm drinking. <laughs> so you go to your P drive and you say, I got a bunch of things in here. But you would just go to your P drive and just save it in a folder if you need to or wherever you need to save it. And, and then you will be done and you will have your work saved and your instructor will be happy. You will have a stress-free um, stress weekend. You've done all of your work. Oh, it's fitting to tell me I'm fitting to expire because I haven't done anything in a while. I've been talking to you guys. So, but that's how you would use Remote Lab Access with an application, open up your files and save your work. Now you ask, what if I want to get something from my thumb drive up to my P drive from home? I'm going to cover two more things and I'm going to let you out, I promise. And this won't take long, because if I go any longer, I'm going to pass out from dehydration or sweat. Gosh, I got, I got to exercise more. I got to get on that program. 
I'm too old too. Somebody said that, didn't they? I was too old. I am kind of old. So I'm going to open up Windows Explorer. And again, if you notice, I open up Windows Explorer inside Citrix. I didn't open up Windows Explorer down here. I did it inside Citrix. That was under Windows Tools. So if you, in the main, go to Windows Tools, open up Windows Explorer, and it's going to look just like the one on your computer, and you're going to get really confused. Why can't I just use one? We've got to work inside this bubble because Citrus is, is kind of protecting the, the traffic so that we can't do all kind of funky things. Uh-oh. You got one, don't you? I don't remember mine looking like that. <clears throat> on Windows Explorer? It should. It may be just a crumb different on what operating system you're using and how the um, machine communicates, but it's going to be laid out in a very similar fashion where I have over on this side links to the folders. And the folders may look a little different according to what operating system you're using. I'm using Hasta La Vista on this computer, so um, it's kind of old, but um, we'll get it updated one day. So if I had my little fancy thumb drive in here, it would be down here, and it would be down here where it says C on. Whatever thumb drive letter it was in the computer, it would say E on, and it would be your computer name. As long as we have it plugged in before we actually start the program itself, it's going to acknowledge it and it'll be easier to move it to the V drive? Yep. Okay. And as long as you answer yes on all the little questions that says I'm fitting to mess your machine up. Um, so here, and, and it's just, as long as you're in here, it's just like any other, any other Windows Explorer. I could come down, I could find the file, I could click on it, and I could drag it and drop it anywhere here. So. So if I'm here and I open up my C drive, and I got a file, and, and it, say this is my flash drive. I don't have a flash drive in here, but say that's my flash drive, and I want to get a file off my flash drive, and where are some of just, And then I can, I can right-click that file like I do in Windows Explorer. I can drag it up to my P drive. I can let go, and I've just transferred it from my thumb drive up to my P drive. You can do the same thing while you're on campus. If you don't want to worry with this, if you're on campus, you want to pop your P drive in and drag the stuff, I mean, not your P drive, flash drive in, drag stuff directly to your P drive. You can do that while you're on campus. When you get home, then it's on your P drive. You don't have to have your flash drive. And so <clears throat> that's that. And the last thing I want to make comment about is your P drive. There's a few pointers, and this doesn't require anything from up here for you to look at. Um, as a student, you can't see your classmates' P drives. So if you think you're late on that assignment, I'm just going to go take a peek over here at his stuff, and you saw their little number on the ID badge, you can't access it. Your instructor can access your P drive. I can access your P drive. I can access it because I'll have to be able to access it because we have problems, I've got to be able to go fix it. Your instructor can access it because in the very initial days of the P drive, we're going to give students a place to dump their documents so they could grade it, mark it up, save it, then you could come back later when they say it's done, open it up and see their markups and see your grade. So that's why a faculty can see it. I only tell you that because from time to time, we run out of camera space on our phone. We're in the restroom, got that camera up, and it says no more room. You run to the classroom, pop your camera in, download your photos to your P drive, because so you, you got that perfect selfie that you got to do, you got the perfect attire on. We got to get it today. So you dump your camera photos on our P drive so you can free up all the space. I don't care if you do that. I don't look at your photos. But I'm letting you know that your instructor grading your picture, I mean grading your paper may see spring break 2014. It may get curious. Because that might be part of the assignment. What did you do on spring break 2014? You may have some stuff out you don't want to get seen. I don't police it, I don't care. All I ask, all I'm telling you is when my server gets grouchy. First things that goes is music, videos, and pictures. So if you got your one-year-old's birthday, first birthday party, we got to get our selfie in, so we go dump that on the server, and we're gonna come get it tomorrow. My server gets grouchy tonight. Guess what you just lost? And the reason I do is if my server gets full, it shuts down and it, inf it impacts the entire infrastructure. So I have to clean it up, and I just made a script. That just seems to be the most heavily put stuff out there and it's usually the biggest file size and that's just the easy thing to, to purge without worrying about messing up documents and things like that. So you can put it out there if you want to, you come back and get it later, you can leave it out there forever if you want to as long as the server hadn't got grouchy and I have to purge him. 
And so, but just be aware that you're not the only one can see your P drive, but the ones that can see it are your instructors. And not even student services, those I don't think they could access the P drive. I think it's just adjunct and just full time faculty and IT department and yourself. You can't see your classmates. Um, so, with that, any questions? I know some of y'all already got turned around, y'all ready to go. Got everything ready down in the sprinter stance. Ready to go. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for interacting with me. Um, it's much more fun when we do these, when we can kind of hit off of each other than when I'm talking to people who just sit there. And of course, you got fed too. See, the last group had to wait till I got through to eat. And so they were really like, wanting to go. All right, thank you. If you got any questions, you can come up here and ask me as well.